think some of the most challenging stuff I've heard about people starting over is uh, f figuring out what they really want to get. Because a lot of times they were going down a certain path, meaning they were focused on something and they were working towards it and working towards it and working towards it and working towards it. And then all of a sudden something happened that kind of wiped away the whole dream, wiped away the whole mission or path that they were on. And so to be sitting in a moment where everything you were working towards, like the slate has been cleaned, everything's open, and to have to sit back down and say, is that what I even really wanted? So in 2016, I, I was a teacher and I lost my job, so I had to find new employment, new career, really. In 2014, I was terminated from a position that I had worked very hard for, and went through a lawsuit and I still suffer a little anxiety from it. The last time I had to start over is when I ended my relationship with the company that, that I was at. I was asked to commit fraud by fraud by the owner. I said no, so I had to start over. Uh, so I uh, was in a dead-end job for three and a half years working for a bank. Um, I quit my job without going to any other job. Basically, I was accused of something that didn't happen. Um, so it was like an investigation, so and so forth, all that. And like, the world felt like it was over, right? It's really interesting hearing people's experience. Um, it, it, it's touching to hear the things that people have gone through and what have caused them to start over. Uh, whether it's the decision to leave a career or the happenstance of getting let go from that career. Uh, it could be leaving a relationship that's no longer right for you or making a decision to even move your home, again, by choice or as what's happened here in the U.S., the hurricanes that swept through and took people's entire homes and livelihood away from them, and now they have to figure out how do you start over. I would say November 1st, um, 2016, that's when the love of my life, uh, my high school sweetheart, uh, Sarah Stone, uh, passed away in my arms, actually, of um, stage four appendix cancer, you know, and I, uh, you know, I honestly didn't know what I was gonna do. We have four small kids. Um, you know, twin 10 year old girls, um, a seven year old little girl and a four year old little boy with special needs who we uh, actually fostered and then eventually adopted when he was a newborn. And um, so I remember thinking, okay, what am I gonna do? Now I'm a single dad, I have four kids and I have to go home and tell them that their mom had just passed away. And that was definitely the beginning of a whole new journey in life, for sure. When Sarah was first diagnosed 10 months prior, uh, we made the promise to each other that no matter what, we find the good in every single day. So every night when we went to bed and every morning when we woke up, we find a reason to smile. Even if that meant me tickling her or um, just finding something good. Usually it had a lot to do with our kids because they're crazy. Uh, you know, it, it's hard and, and it's heartbreaking and it's one of those moments that makes you go <gasps> and have to reset and restart over. And for other people, after they get through that shock or that pain or that uncertainty, to have the freedom to choose and say, wow, I get to start over. I have the opportunity to go somewhere new or try a new path or walk a new direction. Something I've never thought about before is now open to me. And now the, the beauty of it is they have a choice. And, and you know the choice is either to give up and give in or to start over and, and, and redesign where they want to go and how they want to do it. And then, um, the day before Sarah passed away, she made me promise that no matter what, I continue to find the good in every single day. And then I continue to do good things because the world needs more people like us around. I've seen firsthand how important it is not to wait for something bad to happen before you truly get out there and live. And there's already so much hate out there. and There's already so much negativity that, that the world needs people like us to get out there and show the world how important it is to step up and, and do good things. It's so easy to be kind. There's a reason she passed away and I didn't. And I'm not gonna let that go to waste. And um, so I'm gonna hold every single one of those promises and add on to it and do as much good as I possibly can. What helped me starting over was that I had had a consulting company before and the relationships I built by doing a good job and the last consulting that I did helped me get almost all of my clients back within two to three weeks. Now life is good, I'm up and rolling again and I'm making more money than I was when I was working for the criminal. So reported him to NCIS, life is extremely good. I just hit the ground running and that helped build my confidence and 
did, did a few interviews and actually did well at all the interviews and finally landed a job that was better than I had before. So. I think friends and family reminded me that it wasn't my fault and I had nothing to be embarrassed about because for a while I was very embarrassed even about my name. So what I did is, is talk to my, my family. Uh, after I talked to my family, I also like, did a little praying myself, talked to the guy upstairs, and just talking it out like, helps. Um, I then uh, created my own kind of business, and now that has given me the opportunity to have kind of like financial freedom, uh, partly while I'm here in San Diego. Sarah was 29. She had just turned 29 when she passed away. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> Death doesn't know age, I promise you that. And if you think it can't happen to you, it can't. So why aren't you living life happy? Find your good in every single day, because it's there. There's already enough hate out there, the news, everybody else. Don't get sucked into that. Positivity is just as contagious as negativity, and it's our job to make as many people's lives better as we can. So I started over in October, um, leaving a long, serious, relationship and then I started over changing careers just two months ago and moving across the country two months ago. I just remember so many different emotions that I hadn't ever experienced before and a whole range of emotions from feeling confident to feeling completely terrified to feeling completely supported to feeling alone. There was a lot on my plate so the first thing that I would do is make sure I take one day at a time and stay really really focused on that one day like what did I need to accomplish for that day as far as these goals, how can I take care of myself best in this day and make sure I'm showing up with presence to each moment because the second I started thinking about every single thing that needed to transpire, it was way too overwhelming. I would always walk, like take long walks throughout the day to get my body moving, to get outside in nature and like really connect back to myself. Just learning to trust myself again, like learning to trust my intuition, learning to trust kind of my gut feelings and, and really starting to follow the things that naturally lit me up. At this point in my life, who I am now, 32 years old, what are the things that light me up? What do I love? Where do I feel inspired? What kind of people are around me that make me feel inspired and motivated and, and lit up? And started to really notice what those things were and then make decisions based on where those things were. How's it going? Good. <laughs> When's the last time you hit the start over? I just dropped a phone call and I had to start that call over. Oh, you want a serious answer? Maybe a, a disagreement with a loved one and you choose, instead of carrying it with you, you choose to start over and to show up as a better version of yourself, to, to not carry that with you. I really feel that if you can do that on a regular basis, that when those tough times will happen, you have already built up the resilience and awareness of what it takes to how to show up and be your best self or how to be resilient and rise above like a, a super trying or devastating situation that might happen in life, right? I swear, I, I like, I, no, truly. I'm going to try again tomorrow and it's going to be so much better. And that's, if I burn dinner. <laughs> Is that what I even really wanted? Or is there something else at this moment in my life, now that I'm here, that I've experienced these things and gone these places and met these people and had all this stuff unfold, is there something else that might be more important to me? Have my values changed? Is there something else that might be more compelling or exciting to go after or be a part of? And I realize you watching have had your own experience of starting over, or you might be headed for one soon. That first piece is really truly resetting the foundation and figuring out how do you recenter, how do you recalibrate, how do you how do you get the foundation set so that you have something to move forward on, something to stand on that's solid, mentally, emotionally, physically. Uh, the second piece is recalibrating for where you want to go, figuring out what do you want next. Uh, you know, where do you want to go? What do you want to feel? What do you want to experience? How do you want life to be from this point moving forward? And once you've kind of recalibrated and locked on with what you do want to do, that the next piece is to go. 
to take action, to start moving forward. Taking immediate action really helps build confidence and build certainty that you can make it happen and that it will work. Reaching out to friends and family, knowing you're not alone, having that support, that community behind you in helping you make progress and move forward. And this is something that when we look at performance coaching, this is something we talk about because inevitably these are the three steps. If you want to maximize your personal performance, number one, you're going to need a solid foundation. We talk about sleep. We talk about exercise and nutrition to set that foundation in who you are as a man or woman. Uh, number two, you're really going to need to have a clear vision of where you're headed. And in that vision, your 20-year vision, your 10-year vision, your five-year vision, your one-year goals, your, your six-month goals, your daily habits that are going to help you really take one step closer every single day to get the results you desire and deserve. And, and finally, we realize that you're going to have to have fulfillment and joy and happiness. And one of the keys from Harvard University to have that fulfillment, longevity, and true happiness in life comes down to your peer group. How well can you build that powerful peer group to support you in your journey and be there when you need them most? So I hope this is helpful for you. I hope you've enjoyed this journey and we look forward to seeing you next week for another conversation.